What's going on everybody? I'm Jonathan Thompson and this is another episode of The Career Couch. This is TaziriNet. We were all about career exploration, wealth education, and lifestyle empowerment. And so this evening we have a great special guest. Her name is Destiny Carr. Mm -hmm. um, and so today guys, we're gonna be discussing two careers, not just one. And so Destiny is actually a K through five educator yeah right and yes. physical education yes right P -E. so pe um quick rundown what are what are some of the activities that you do as a pe teacher because when i was when i was a kid i remember when we took pe you know we would play ball we would play tag uh we would do crazy things during recess but where does the actual education part come in at, right yes yeah, so i think that PE has sort of transformed from back in the day when we were in school, right. there wasn't really any direction to what PE was other than not having to sit at a desk and read and write, right? Right. So my goal as a PE teacher, I want to help my students just create a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So I want to teach them and, and really embed in them that it's important to have healthy habits. Now that does start with eating right you know eating in moderation not only having to have diets or anything like that but just anything in moderation and living an active lifestyle to where you're not sedentary being on a video game all day watching tv netflix we mm -hmm. live in a world of technology now where it's super easy not to move around right and yet we are living in a country where obesity is one of the main things that's killing people nowadays and not being healthy. So I wanna really just use my class to teach my students. It can be fun to be active mm -hmm. and it can be fun to um, really eat right like you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. So we do play games. We um, we also build social, emo social emotional learning. So teaching them how to problem solve with each other, how to be creative to come up with games on different types of equipment. Right. Um, so basically just learning how to be active and not necessarily having to be in the gym. Okay. You know? So um, there's, I mean, we had a whole year of lessons. I like to follow the sports. So we do football lessons mm -hmm. and, and skills that are taken into that, that football players use. We do basketball lessons, volleyball lessons, jump rope lessons, track lessons. Mm -hmm. So we do the whole nine. I really just like to make it fun for them to where they're excited to come to PE and not just to get out of class to read, but they're actually learning tips and tools that they can take with them outside of school. Right. And even influence their family, mm -hmm. influence their parents that may not have an active, active lifestyle teach their younger brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. So just tools that they can actually use in real life to be healthy. That's good. Mm -hmm. And that's cool because I like how you said that, you know, it's, you can be healthy, but have fun at the same yeah. time. And so it's not just like you, you know, sitting down in class at a desk, taking notes and all that kind of stuff. You're actually being active. Mm -hmm. And I can tell by the way you're talking that you're really, this is something that you're really interested in. Like yes. this is something that you feel is, somewhat natural to you, right? Yeah, so I actually like being active. I am a dancer or was a dancer. I danced through college and um, I was the captain of my team and we won a national championship, but I also have felt what it feels like to not be in my best shape. Mm -hmm. Now, there are people who, you know, have to come back from a further standpoint of what their body looks like and how it feels like, but I always told myself, I want to be healthy enough to where I can you know, walk upstairs without being out of breath, that mm -hmm. I can play with my kids, that I can decrease my chances of passing away early because I didn't take care of the inside and the outside of my body. Mm -hmm. And so if I, it's one of those things that I always want to help people better themselves, for themselves while we're here on this earth. Right. Um, I do believe in preparing for your eternity as well. Mm -hmm. So, but while we're here on this earth, you might as well get the best out of this life that you can. And when you're unhealthy inside and out, it's really hard to live a lifestyle that makes you happy. Right. So if I can get the students to understand this while they're young, mm -hmm. they can take this, this learning with them when they get older and won't have to come back to, a lot of people try to get back in shape. Right. How about we just stay in shape so we don't have to 
exactly. <laughs> Backtrack, really. Right, right. And, and you know, there's a, there's a phrase that goes along with that. You know, it's better to be, um, to be prepared for something than to have to react to something. Yeah. So preparation always, is always better than having to, you know, try to fix something that has gone wrong. Right. And so, and that's definitely good. So we definitely need more people like that who have that type of mentality, mm -hmm. uh, especially as educators. So um, now, uh, let's briefly talk about your role in general as an educator. So, um, I, from what I understand, most teachers don't actually want to have they they weren't planning on being teachers from when they were a kid. You know, maybe a few. Yeah. But um, but we all come into this profession from different angles and from different experiences. Yes. And so, what was one thing in particular that? sort of drew you into becoming an educator? It's so funny you asked me that because I was one of those people who said I will never be a teacher. <laughs> ever, ever, ever. Right? Yes, I come, I come from a family of teachers. My grandmother was in education. My cool. dad was in education. He was mm -hmm. a PE teacher. My mom is a teacher now. She's, the, um, she's trying to become a counselor. But I saw how much work they put in. I saw how much they were valued. I saw how much money they made. And that was not a lifestyle that I wanted. Oh, okay. And that's why I was like, never. But I have found that you never say never because God will humble you and, <laughs> right. and you'll end up doing the things that you say you're never gonna do. So mm -hmm. I didn't take the typical path of going to school for education. Mm -hmm. I w studied communication in college. I went to Stephen F. Austin in, in Nacogdoches and I studied communication because I knew all the professions that I did not wanna do. I didn't wanna teach, I didn't want to uh, I couldn't lie. I wasn't a good liar, so I wouldn't. I couldn't be a lawyer. Like <laughs> blood and guts and like vomit, that makes me sick. So I couldn't be a doctor. Like there's a bunch of stuff I could not do. So I was like, right. what could I do that people need? So I was like, people are always going to be on this earth. Let me learn how to communicate with them. Let me, you know, I can find something. I can present to people. I can, I can talk on stages. I'd like to do that one day. So I went into communications. Now what they won't tell you is sometimes you'll be told that you need to go to school, get a, get good grades, get out and get you a good job. I did those three things. I held, I held up my part of the bargain. Right. I went to college, I, I graduated on the Dean's List with like a 3.5 and magna cum laude and all that stuff. Nice. And I got out, but that job was not waiting for me like I thought it was gonna be. Mm. And that really took me back to okay now what and so i went to what i was good at i was always good with kids i didn't necessarily feel like that was the path to get me where i want to go financially mm -hmm. but um i knew i should do something that i was good at so i'd always work with you know at, at summer camps and stuff so i went into substitute teaching because my mom said you have bills <laughs> you you have bills, so yeah. you need to make some money, and you're good at that. So why don't you do that until you can find what you really want to do, mm -hmm. just so you can make money to pay your bills. I said, okay. Um, sometimes there's a such thing as being too good at what you do. I was really good that the principal came to me and asked me, did I want to be a full-time teacher? And I was like, uh, no. I told you I don't want to do that. Right. Um, and like I told you earlier in the, in the interview, I, I'm a dancer. So he's like, what if you teach dance? And I said, oh. That's how they got you. Yeah, that's how they got me. They pulled me, pulled me in. I said, okay, I could teach dance all day. That would be fun. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't tell me I'd have to teach health and PE too because the dance teacher, she was moving to Germany and uh, she also taught health and PE. So I would take her role. So I had to, I ended up enrolling into an alternative certification program to become a teacher, mm -hmm. um, Texas teachers. And I started teaching health and PE. Did you miss the part that I didn't say dance? Uh, he promised me a dance uh, position and they canceled the dance program at that school. Oh. So I got stuck with teaching health and PE. Bummer. Yeah. The funny thing is I fell in love with it and I do believe that God works in mysterious ways. I met my husband mm -hmm. who is also a PE teacher. We met and you know, uh, and it, of course it didn't happen all at once. That's a long story for another time. <laughs> but <laughs> um, I think I was put in that position to be able to meet him and start our family. Mm -hmm. um, and I think two years later, I did end up starting the, the dance program. And funny enough, I hated it. It was, it was horrible. I didn't really have any support. I was coming up with curriculum on my own, just like flying by the seat of my pants. And um, 
they were just sticking kids in my class that didn't want to be there. <laughs> so imagine teaching students that don't want to learn what you're teaching. Wow. Even when I tried to make it fun, I mean, we learned the Dougie, but it's more to dance than hip hop, and that's all they want to learn. Right. So um, long story short, I got into teaching by accident, um, but I don't regret it because it's brought me some of the greatest things that I have now, so. That's good, and I, I totally agree that, you know, Sometimes you might have a set plan for your life, but God might have a different side. Yeah. And so, and that's something we should all be aware of. Now, um, we know that as educators, there's a lot that goes into the profession. You know, yeah. we have to teach kids and we have to, there's a lot of hats that we wear. You know, you gotta be the curriculum person. You also have to be the, the, the principal sometimes. Sometimes you have to be the, um, the nice teacher sometimes you have to be the hardcore teacher mm -hmm. there's a lot of different things that you got to do and so and one of the issues that happens in the field of education is that with all of these different hats that we have to wear sometimes it feels like and it seems like the the amount of pay that we receive in our salary mm -hmm. doesn't match yes. the level of of commitment that we have to this craft. Yes. And so a lot of educators find themselves looking for supplemental income right. and side hustles and all that stuff. Right. So, and one reason why I'm happy that you're here is because you actually managed to do that, right? <laughs> yeah. um, and you have something that's not related to education in the classical sense. You're actually yes. working with Primerica. Yes. Okay. Yes. So go ahead and uh, tell us. Um, how did you get to working with Primerica? You were a teacher trying to start a dance program <laughs> at your school and didn't work out too well. Yeah. And then you also got into what you do currently. Right. So how was how did you find that transition to go? So I kind of condensed my introduction into education into a five minute story, but that was a course of three years. Mm -hmm. In that three year time span, as you guys can already see that my faith is super big to me. So I was praying one day, I was just unfulfilled. I was frustrated. Um, I just wasn't happy where I was. Not that the money wasn't okay, I was single. You know, I had my own apartment, my own car, so the money I was making was fine as a teacher. But I, there's more to that, more to what you do other than just money. And I felt unfulfilled and I felt like I could not do this for the rest of my life if mm. I had to be in this environment. So I started praying and lo and behold, God answered my prayers, just not in the, in the aspect that I thought he was going to. Right. I said, Lord, give me something that I have to have complete faith in you in, that I can take a leap of faith, maybe that I can use my skills, maybe that I can use my degree. You know, something that I feel like I have power that I can talk about you in. Because in education, I hope this video doesn't get in trouble because I said <laughs> God a couple of times. But oh, usually good. in education, mm -hmm. you can't, you know, share your faith with your students. You have to be kind of neutral. And I wanted something that I could be all out with. And uh, literally a day later, a friend of mine reached out to me and said, hey, do you keep your, um, your options open when it comes to making money? And I said, Lord, <laughs> is this you? <laughs> like, yes. And, and, you know, I was like, yes, yes, yes. So, you know, what is it? And um, over the course of a, a, a couple of weeks, I learned about this company. And what drew me to it was the things that I was missing in teaching. Mm. So when I did my interview, um, he asked me, Do you, is your faith important to you? I had never had a company ask me that. Never. Wow. Asked me, was my faith important to me? Of course, you know, you guys know what I said. I said, yes, it's very important to me. He's right. like, that's awesome because we believe in God first, family second, business third. You need to make sure your faith is right. Make sure you're tithing. If you're married, make sure you go on date night. You know, I never, you know, people in education, they don't care what you do with your spouse. Right. They don't care if you have to grade papers on date night. They just want the work done and you better have it done when they tell you to have it done, right? So, um, and then business third, so they want you to have all aspects of your life. You can have it all. You don't have to give up your family to be successful. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've found in business is that a lot of times you, if they're going to pay you a large amount of money, you have to, you have to sacrifice some things. Mm -hmm. You have to sacrifice your family life. You have to sacrifice going to church on Sundays if they call you in on a Sunday. Right. And I wasn't willing to do that. And so when I was interviewing, those three things caught my caught my mind. Um, he said, you know, have you ever thought about owning your own business? 
I did because I realized the reason I was so unfulfilled is because I don't like working for people. <laughs> I, I was going to do my own thing. Yeah, thing. Yes, I want to do my own thing. Mm -hmm. And I don't want somebody bugging me about not being on duty on time. Like, I want to make my own hours. Mm -hmm. I want to go on vacation when I want to go on vacation without having to ask for permission. Right. Um, in teaching, you can't take off the day before a holiday. But what if that's the day that I want to take off? You know, you're going to tell me no or dock my pay? Mm -hmm. So, um... Here in, in Primerica, I can actually make my own schedule. I can put God and my family first. And this is the part that really kind of caught my eye was that they act, the company pays more people six and seven figures than any other corporation in North America. Wow. Um, more people under the age of 30, more people who are African American or are minorities, and more women. Six figures, so that's making more than $100,000 a year. Mm. Not in of a total of you being in the business, but you can make that many, that much money a year, rolling 12, than any other corporation in North America. The fact that I have that opportunity, I would never have that opportunity in teaching. There's a cap to your salary. Right. Now here, this is based off my own worth, work ethic. Mm -hmm. So I was like, if I can have that shot, if I just stick with it long enough, I can take my family to a place that we would never have that chance anywhere else. Right. And so I was, I was very intrigued by that. I would be too. <laughs> it's like, where can I sign up? <laughs> right. Paying that much? What you mean? And yeah. honestly, we, we just had um, the 104th person in our company. She is, her name is Mika Saunders. Mm. She used to be a, a nurse, a registered nurse. Wow. She just crossed a million dollars in income. Ooh. 104 people in our company make over a million dollars a year. 104, not the not the one CEO, 104 regular people mm -hmm. that decided to take a chance on themselves make over a million dollars a year in our company. That's impressive. And yeah. so, and that just goes to show the power of entrepreneurship. Right. And that's that's something we definitely need more um, in our community, and something that should be covered more in our curriculum and in our educational systems because and like what you said it's not just for the money because obviously there's multiple ways to get money in this yeah. life but i like that you hit on the whole thing about fulfillment because you can still like you said you're very big on your faith and you want to be able to be open about it without having to stay so neutral right. or kind of play the politically correct game and stay out of trouble in some yeah. uh, some ways so that's really great that you're able to find something in addition to teaching yeah. that allows you to still pull into those strengths that you have. And so um, could you see yourself being a full-time person? And when I ask that question, I'm also kind of asking, um, would you always consider yourself an educator even though you're not a teacher? Yes, okay. so my job duties, quote unquote, is mm. Basically what I do in Primerica, I, I help educate people how money works. Now, if anybody has gone through the school system, it's not really built into the curriculum to teach you how money works in the real world. Yes, you may have economics. Yes, you may have mac mac macro and micro, but it doesn't teach you the hands-on things that we deal with every single day when it comes to money. Now, when so many people, the public, middle-income people don't have that education, we are flying by the seat of our pants when it comes to creating a financial future for our families and for ourselves. So I actually help educate people how that works. I could teach this in a class, but they don't offer that in, in school. So I, I'm teaching adults how money works. I look at their situation now, where are you now? And then I ask them questions, where do you wanna be? Where do you wanna be financially? What age do you wanna retire? How much money do you need to retire with? What do you have saved so far? You know, how much debt do you have? That plays a big part. Because right. when you grow up and you don't know how to manage money, you can get wrapped up into a lot of debt to where you right. owe people. Right. So I help them get out of debt. I help them build savings. I help them understand different insurance products by educating them how it works. Right. Now, there's a lot of people out there that will sell you all those kind of things that I can sell, but they won't educate you on how it works. So the Bible says if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. Mm -hmm. But if you teach a man a fish, you feed him for, for a lifetime. Life. Right. So I teach them how these things work. It's still education. Um, and then I help put them a, a plan in place for them to follow. And if they follow it, it's just like a GPS. Okay, if you're going somewhere you, that you don't know how to get there, you put in your point A where you are now. 
you put in your point B and you assume that the GPS is gonna take you to that location the fastest way um, using the less amount of money, mm. right? So if you right. were in Texas, you're trying to drive to Florida, you wouldn't go there without a GPS because you probably use up way too much gas. You probably end up in New York. You're like, you're <laughs> just going the wrong way. Right. Mm. So this financial plan that I put together for people, it helps them reach their financial goals short and long term. And I teach them how to do that along the way versus just selling them products. Gotcha. Yeah. And so your, your actual job title is an agent. Right. Yes, yes. Okay, and so, and with the agent, you have the freedom to go and talk to pretty much anyone who is in need of those services, mm -hmm. right? So that's pretty cool. Um, and again, something that I always find really, really fascinating is not only when people are able to find multiple ways of getting income, mm -hmm. but again, when they can, when they can really integrate those skills and those abilities that they've picked up along the along their journey in life so a question is you're you're very passionate about what you do mm -hmm. and that goes both ways in terms of being an agent and also being a teacher mm -hmm. you care about those people that you're working with right. and so we're very large we're very big on um trying to figure trying to find ways to get people to prepare for their future better mm -hmm. and so what are some things that you felt were thing what were some what were some ways that school was able to help you because we know that there's some ways that school helps you mm -hmm. and school might even hinder you in some ways mm -hmm. what are some of the ways that you felt that you've been helped to get to the point where you're at right now okay so i'm gonna start by saying i do not believe that going straight to a four-year college is the only way to become successful right previously that's really what we were told what we were taught and i think that's a fallacy i'm not sure you know if you will ever hear that anywhere else but i'm going to tell you now that is not the only way to be successful um there are different options to mm -hmm. where you can go to a community college and pay out of pocket and then transfer to a four-year if you want um you can go to a trade school become a master plumber a technician somebody that has a specific skill so I believe that skill set and um, knowing the right people, it's all about who you know. Right. And networking, learning how to network is super, super important. Mm -hmm. Now, I wasn't taught that. I thought I had to go to college. So I did, I went to college and I got a four year degree, but I see a lot of people that are way more successful than me that have, they don't have that piece of paper that I have. Right. Um, but I will say that college did prepare me in an aspect, not as far as the degree, but um, it taught me how to be independent, be on my own, because I went away to college and I had to learn how to be my, on my own. Mm -hmm. um, it'll teach you how to manage your, your time and it'll teach you how to study. Um, I would also say I learned how to network because going, I think that the college life is a good experience because it teach you, teaches you a lot about yourself. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot about myself during that time. Right. Um, I will say, um, as far as education goes, you don't have to. It's not the only way. There are other things you do. Now, I will say this. When I say you don't have to go to college, I don't mean sit on your mama's couch and eat cereal all day watching Netflix, okay? <laughs> That is not what I mean. I mean, you can go to work, you can network with people, you can start your own business, find something that you're really good at. You can go abroad, learn a new language, learn a new skill. When you, all business is and all it takes to be successful is you find a need and you fill that need. And if you can fill that need, there's gonna be grand opportunity for you to be successful because you're serving others, you're serving other people. And so what helped me um, with getting to where I am and having, I'm nowhere near where I want to be yet. I am, a, I'm a strong believer that you have to be a life learner. Right. I, as even as a 30 year old adult, I'm still learning. Mm. I'm still trying to better myself. So you have to be a master at personal development. Okay. Always try to get better. Once you feel like you can't get better, you're stuck. You're stuck. Right. You you when you feel like you can't learn from anybody else, you will never um, be the best that you could possibly be. Right. So 
always be learning, be a life learner. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to continue going to school, but you can learn in different ways. I would also listen to podcasts. Um, what is what is the guy's name? Eric Thomas. Eric have Thomas. You, Eric, um, have you ever heard of him? I might have heard of he him. He has an awesome podcast, um, just about getting better. He's a a public speaker where he'll go to different places. Um, it's a very good listen. Um, all the things that he talks about, but awesome. yeah, I would just say it's not mandatory. If you, but you know, it's useful and it has its it has its place. Mm -hmm. Education has its place. Right, and that's coming from an educator. That's coming herself, from an guys. educator. <laughs> and so, and I agree that education is not just something you do from grade school up to a particular age. That's mm -hmm. something that happens throughout life. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, there there's people that I look up to like. Um, like Elon Musk, for example, who runs mm. Tesla. He's mm -hmm. he's older than us, and he runs multi-billion-dollar uh, company selling cars and sending rockets to space and doing all these incredible things. But that requires people to continue learning. Mm -hmm. And so, and and one thing that I notice is that a lot of the most successful people in life have that attitude of, hey, I, I'm never going to have known everything. I always need to be consistently learning. I should be reading books. I should be reading. networking and yes. listening to podcasts and enriching my mind. <laughs> all right, y'all, that's all with this episode of The Career Couch. This has been Net, and I want to say thank you again to Destiny. Yes. You've been an incredible <laughs> guest. I should give you an elbow. We're still in oh. COVID. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So guys, if you have any questions for me, any questions for Destiny, go ahead and type those into the comment section below. Please also do a big, big favor and like the, like the video and subscribe. Share this video with other people who are like-minded, other people that want to be entrepreneurs and they want to find that career. Yeah. So with that being said, guys, this has been Tajirinet. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace out.